Inside of this box is a brand new restoration project that I'm beginning. This video series is going to be about restoring this Pioneer SX750 and uh, I don't know how many parts it's going to be right now but I hope you'll uh, continue to watch those parts as I put them up because we're going to go through this receiver redoing the cabinet, doing some physical repairs on the face and uh, going through the inside of it, testing some stuff, possibly replacing some stuff, we'll have to see but uh, let me get this thing out of the box and show you guys what this thing looks like right now I can already tell you that I'm not entirely happy with the fact that the seller put packing tape over this uh, veneer uh, it's already not all that in a good shape and in fact the veneer is wanting to kind of peel off with the tape back there so I'm going to have to do this really delicately get this off because while I'm going to have to do some work on this cabinet um, I don't want to peel off all the original uh, veneer on it just yet so and it's paper thin stuff too I mean it's just incredible thin and it's literally just paper it's all it really literally is but I'm not I'm not thrilled about that and yeah on this receiver yeah I'm gonna have to redo the cabinet so it's not terribly a it's not a terribly big deal if it peels off but um, you, you don't sell you don't ship stereo receivers like this you don't put packing tape on the wood veneer I just it pisses me off anyway so this is what we got here I gotta get this protective this foam off of this um, all the knobs are here and it sounds really good actually at least the power switch does <clears throat> that button seems to work just fine problem with this thing is that the glass is is broken on this and it is genuine glass on these things which is really nice but I've already got a replacement piece of glass for this thing it's also missing the the uh, tuner knob and I've already got one of those that I ordered in but uh, I'll show you some some of that damage that was done to this thing it's probably dropped the other thing too is the power cord was sliced off at some point so that's going to be fun to replace that not a big deal I can just cut up a cord and uh, I have to take this thing apart and solder it down in, you know, fish it down in here and solder it in wherever it goes. But, uh, yeah, so let me, uh, let me get uh, more of this uh, taken off of here. So here's what we've got. Pioneer SX750. See right there. All the knobs are intact, all the switches, the switch covers, stuff like that. But you can see the tuning dial is bent. The, the shaft here is bent to the tuning dial. And the glass is, is broken right here. I'm guessing this got dropped or something hit it. I don't know what, but it bent the hell out of that thing. And that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's brass. But, uh... I uh, have one of these, I already ordered one of these to replace this, but I'm thinking that I might be able to bend this back. If I can, I'm just going to do that. If I can just straighten it up, that would be great. Uh, it does turn. You can see it does turn. And the needle turn, uh, moves as well, so the string is all intact and stuff there. The... Uh, that's going to have to be addressed, obviously. Uh, the faceplate on this thing is actually in rather surprisingly excellent shape, given you know this. Uh, I don't see any scratches at all on this faceplate. None of the lettering and numbering is worn off on it. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of grime on it here, but nothing that won't wash up <coughs> or wash off. <clears throat> it's got some tape on it here. I don't know what that used to say, but that's going to have to come off. I already took this. There's a piece of tape right here. I took that off. 
already and thankfully it didn't lift the lettering but uh, you can see that the whole face plate is shifted you can see how it's cocked there it's actually sticking up on this side Let's see it's straight down here and if you go onto this side it's lower it's sticking out up here so this whole thing shifted this way uh, probably like I said it got dropped I think is what happened was shifted that whole faceplate so that's gonna have to be well the faceplate's coming off anyway so that's not a big deal the um, veneer on this thing like I said before it's 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 like paper thin and there's a there's a plastic underlayment to that and that's glued to the hole to the uh, board underneath and see I can just lift it up there you see the glue under there that they use so that's uh, that's all gonna have to be fixed I'm kind of thinking about there's a couple things I could do I could strip all of the the veneer off of this thing and I'm not even sure it's a veneer it's almost feels like plastic but uh, anyway this wood grain veneer strip that off and uh, get some new veneer and uh, put that on or uh, I could paint the whole cabinet black that might not look too bad actually that that might be a uh, hey uh, last resort but uh, I'm kind of thinking of to uh, getting some uh, walnut and custom making a cabinet and just doing it all out of uh, true walnut and then staining it to match this it would be fairly easy to do I don't really have any any significant uh, cuts that would have to be made in it and this back uh, metal panel back here the grill that's all one piece and so the only piece of wood I'd have to cut would be this and this is just a straight piece right here so it's not like we've got like a, a solid piece up here with a with a chunk cut out in the middle for venting and some of these have this is just this would be really easy to cut out um, and the sides <clears throat> they screw into the chassis down here so it would have to be glued together obviously but these little pieces right here would have to be um, made as well and then I don't know if those are glued on or if they're screwed on from the inside but we'll find that out when I take the front panel off you can see that that's definitely glass the way it's cracked and uh, I got a uh, front panel for an SX650 uh, it was only $15 on eBay I was uh, contemplating about just going over to a glass shop and having them cut out a piece of glass for this I read online um, people that did that were charged anywhere between like six bucks and fifteen dollars for that uh, so I kind of like the idea if I hadn't found a faceplate on eBay for fifteen dollars with a with a good piece of glass in it, I would have had that. I would have just gone and had this made. But I kind of like the idea of having an original piece of glass in this as just part of the restoration process. Uh, you can see the tuning scale is in immaculate condition. I mean, overall, this thing's really not in that bad a shape physically. The aluminum faceplate is probably the most important piece on any uh, vintage uh, uh, stereo receiver or amplifier uh, so and these things will just continue to go up in value too so um, these are I really like these switches and all the not all but the the bass and treble are detented controls there that switch sounds perfectly fine before I took this cover off I wanted to point out that this metal grill back here does have some rusting on it very light so that's gonna have to be uh, sanded and repaint this but uh, let's go ahead and uh, pop the cover on this thing and see what we've got inside Here's the inside of the case, top case.
doesn't look too bad in here. You can see that that's back panel screwed in right there. So I'll make for an easy removal. Kind of looks to me like they just spray painted this. Kind of weird. So let's see here. It looks like everything in here is pretty well, pretty well intact. Can see a couple pretty good size uh, filter capacitors there. See the power transistors back there. And uh, it's just like the uh, Kenwood 9940. These are those same transistors. Looks like we've got the protection. I'm guessing that's the protection board right there. Looks like, a, looks like a protection relay to me. Uh, 1500 microfarad. Uh, capacitors, main main filter capacitors there. Let's see if I can tell brand name. Uh, Nip and Kenny Chemicon there. Get the camera out of the shadow there. Let's see the United Chemicon or Nip and Chemicon actually. And we got the tuner. Definitely needs a good blow job, that's for sure. There's our dial string. And it looks like that could be a pain in the butt to replace. It does have it does have a couple screws right there. So maybe when I get into this, maybe that can just be unscrewed to get that this part of the shaft off where that string is riding on that string is really tight too and just maybe I, maybe that thing just pops off and then I could just replace this part of the with the with the new shaft that would save a lot of time with that dial string because I certainly don't want to mess with that of course we got the light bulbs in here there's some interesting looking bulbs in there I don't see any capacitors that look like they've blown up or are leaking. Of course, that doesn't guarantee that they're any good, of course, but... Uh, I think this is going to fix up nicely. I think a lot of the problems with this thing is just mostly cosmetic. I think that's what this is going to turn out to be. Um, I'm going to have to replace the power cord, like I said earlier, but uh, I'm waiting for a Variac to arrive, so I'm going to put this on the Variac. I'm not going to plug it into the to the wall power. I, I figured I need to get a Variac so I can do this stuff properly. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I just plug this in, it probably wouldn't blow up or anything like that, but uh, it's better to do things the right way, <laughs> even if... You know, just just because you know. So I got a Variac, um, and I'm going to use it for other projects as well. So I just needed to get one and get it over with. Only fifty bucks. So uh, yeah, so that'll be the this will be the first project that that gets used for. But uh, it doesn't really look like anything got spilled in here. If it did, it's been a long time, long time ago, but. It, Looks to me like everything is equally dusty. I don't see anything that indicates there was some water that spilled on that dust somewhere and and uh, washed the dust away. Yeah, it's nice to see that big of a filter capacitor though. Main filter cap in here, and these don't fill. They don't fill bulged or. Mm. Yeah, they don't. They feel fine. I'll probably put those on the capacitor tester too, and just check them. 
but uh, I don't think this is going to need a whole lot of work to get it up and going. I, you know, someone cut the cord on it, so it kind of makes me wonder if this thing was either at a thrift store or flea market or something that just threw this thing out and cut the cord, or if it was at a recycling center and someone lopped the cord off of it, or I don't know, but definitely was cut with what looks to me like a pair of wire cutters so uh, a crime against vintage audio when someone does that hmm, that uh, tuner's got a gear reduction on it there plastic gear reduction too that's kinda interesting I didn't expect to see a plastic anything on that tuner but there it is fins on that tuner look pretty good again it needs a blow job but they, they're shiny so they're fairly clean there's a little bit of grime on the end of this one right here and that's what that just wiped off so yeah, I'll have to blow that tuner out give it a cleaning with some contact cleaner and uh, yeah so I think this will conclude part one of this restoration series part two I hope to uh, get a new cord put on it and we can at least do an initial power up test of this thing and to kind of evaluate it at that point the uh, functionality at that point and if it is just cosmetic stuff that has to be done on this thing I'm going to be really happy because that means that uh, this was a hell of a score <laughs> just yeah yeah the cabinet's going to be challenging but uh I, I think I can tackle that cabinet. That, that should be kind of fun to do that. I've been kind of wanting to do a, a cabinet restoration of some sort. And uh, I don't think that's going to be too bad, even if I have to just strip all this and buy some new uh, wood veneer, apply it to all these little areas and sand and stain it. That would look better than what Pioneer put on that. But... Uh, so anyway, I hope to see you guys in the next video, and until then, peace out everyone.